Barry Pittendry. I'm a professor in the Department of Entomology. And in my day job, I'm actually a molecular biologist. But uh, one of my true passions has been working with dealing with how to deliver information to low literate learners in developing nations and thereby transmitting knowledge that can help change their lives in a positive way. I've been involved with this type of area for about a decade now, mainly working in West Africa. And as a result of this, these efforts, we started a project about two years ago called Scientific Animations Without Borders. And this project is specifically focused on, on taking scientific knowledge and placing it into an animated format where we can put voice overlays in any language that we want around the world and then deliver that information through a variety of different mechanisms such as cell phones or DVD players or through the internet. And the idea with this project is to provide people around the world with freely accessible information that they can take out into the field and work with low literate learners directly and transmit that information in an efficient and cost effective manner. I come in with a very strong bias because I spent most of my life in an agricultural schools and uh, I've worked in the area of issues of insect attack and, and problems with, with pest attack in, in cropping systems around the world. So I'm very excited to see a program where we can bring together large numbers of people across the, the campus and across the world to work in a collaborative manner to effectively begin to address some of these very major concerns that we have around the world of losing large amounts of food to a variety of, of basic issues that um, hopefully we can find strategies to get around, thereby providing much easier access to food and cutting down on some of the waste that's associated with producing food that doesn't make it to our tables. And I think where the real opportunities in academia are going to come in the future are large-scale collaborative links bringing together people with divergent skill sets, divergent abilities, and uh, divergent interests, and then dovetailing those together to actually have impact on people's lives. And this is the thing that very much excites me about this institution, is I see that the group of people that have been assembled are those you know, sort of sets of individuals that we can really, I, I think, really accomplish some very exciting goals in the next couple of years. Actually, uh, we, we think we'll, we'll have very tangible materials available for low literate learners in sets of languages where they can use those, that information directly in the field to help train people in a way where they can minimize challenges with post-harvest losses. Actually, in fact, we already have some tangible materials that we are taking out to areas in West Africa. And actually, as a result of this program, some of those materials have been translated into languages in India. And we already have collaborators that are ready to begin the process of deploying some of these videos out to uh, many of the farmers that they work with in the field. So uh, we're very excited about what has already emerged from this project. And uh, we look forward to the other materials that will occur. And I think for us, also success is going to build the network of people necessary to get the information into people's hands. And that's already occurring. So I know we're very, uh, we're not very far into the program as, a, as of yet, but I already see tangible results coming out the other end. we have a system in place where we can develop content fairly rapidly. The two challenges that exist are making sure that we develop content that can have the greatest impact on the greatest number of people in the greatest diversity of different systems throughout the world. So the institution really provides us with the opportunity to have access to experts that we can work with to develop the appropriate content. So from that perspective, that's one of our, has been our biggest challenge, but it's also there's a solution available through this program, so we're very excited about that. The second thing is getting people to do voiceovers in a diversity of languages. Um, we've had no problems getting a lot of people involved already, but we need a lot more people for a lot more diverse languages, and having this network of people through this program will be very helpful for this challenge we'll face. And then finally, having networks of people to help us deploy materials in the field, this is is also will has been a challenge will continue to be a challenge but this is also one of the great advantages of this program is again it provides us with a network of individuals that we will need to get things out into people's hands